morning, everyone. My name is David Paul, and my project is called Analysis of Linear Accelerators, Light Radiation Field Coincidence in Arc Measurements. And my supervisors are Pedgman, Martin, and Gabor. At the bottom is just a shortened version of my project name, just to make it easier to say. Um, so just some abbreviations before we start. So I'm going to say LINAC for Linear Accelerator, LIRAD for Light Radiation, and QA for Quality Assurance, just in case no one's, yeah, probably unnecessary. So just to start, the LINAC components, as that will probably be a major equipment in my um, project. So as we can see here, that's the gantry, and that will be, I should use that, but this, this will be the thing that rotates around, and as it rotates, that's why I'll be measuring the light radiation field, which will be generated. Um, just as a note, as there is rotation, it's not entirely circular. I'm not sure how clear it is there, but if we take the measurement at the ISO center, it will kind of be an irregular shape, something like that over there, which I attempted to draw. Um, not very well, but it's an attempt. Um, so next is the light radiation field generation. So as we see here, that's the el electrons coming through, bending magnets, curving it, hitting the tungsten anode, and it shoots the like, radiation beams through, through the collimators onto the field here. And how they generate the light is that they have a source and bounce off a mirror there, which tries to mimic the, um, the, the size of the radiation field as well as possible. So the reason why I'm doing an arc is because things such as the collimators itself is about 50 kilos approximately, which means the rest of the gantry itself will be very, very heavy. And due to gravity, it will not be, some parts of the LINAC will move and thus change the light radiation field. Uh, so just main use of LINAC. I know intensely modulated radiation therapy and volumetric modulated arc therapy has been talked quite about a lot recently. So just a short brief um, overview. IMRT uses multiple beams with different angles, but it has a limit dose to each rotation. So therefore it takes about maybe eight rotations to deliver the entire dose. Whereas volume volumetric modulated arc therapy would deliver dose in less time because it's kind of a 3D dose distribution. Instead of going slice by slice, it just goes straight through and can be done in about two rotations, which will drastically reduce patient dose time on the couch, and that's always good. Um, the other treatments are image-guided radiation therapy and stereotactic radiosurgery and stereotactic body radiation therapy which kind of combines both VMAT and SRS, which I wouldn't talk about because mainly these two are the ones that are using it more. So the aims of my project. So the primary objective is to conduct a light radiation field coincidence in arcs and measure the tilt and skewness of this light radiation field. So this is like a representation of the light field. Um, the bumps in the side are just collimators, but I couldn't find a better image because my photos were pretty bad, so I just have to use this. Um, next is a secondary objective that I thought would be cool, just transcribing the codes from MATLAB to Python. Now, just going through the significance of this, um, my project's mainly quality assurance on the LINAC, and it's very critical because it, AAPM there states it's two millimeter tolerance for light radiation fields, and most current quality assurance methods only conduct the quality assurance of this light radiation field in gantry zero, which is, just gonna go back quickly, which is this sort of orientation. Um, and thus it doesn't actually go into much difference on the you know, arc measurements. So why? It's just more complex and it helps more with the BMR, a, BMAT, IMRT, and SBRT. And it delivers a more accurate dose to patients as it rotates which means there's a less chance of healthy tissue irradiation throughout the rotation. So now why Python? I mean, free. That doesn't need any more explanation than that. Free, best 60,000 a year. And it allows places with less funds to acquire a quality assurance tool. But I'll give Python the credit in that it has a lot more functions that are pre-programmed in and you don't have to program that into Python and loop it in, it's a bit more complex there and Python's just globally available, so I think um, Python might have won the round there. Um, so important literature that I have. Monty, he mainly discusses the radiation field represented by light, 
and how and how that he his conclusion was that a visual verification of the light field better represents the radiation field. So how he conducted the light field measurement was by photodiodes and visual verification. And he said visual verification is better to represent the radiation field. Um, Eckhouse, he kind of just calculated the variations in the radiation field in the arc, but he didn't compare that to the <coughs> light field variations. Um, and well, funnily named, Petchman and Martin both collaborated on this, where they mainly looked at the gantry sag, epid sag, and other mechanical components in electrovary Linux during the arc rotation. Uh, Bilal, he measured the light radiation field coincidence, but he didn't rotate it, so it's only at gantry zero with different size field. An interesting result from that is that as the, si the field size decreased, there was more difference in the light radiation coincidence. Um, so Wong, I put that on there because she provides a tool that I can use to rotate the phantom that we'll be using and try to keep it perpendicular to as we're taking measurements, which I'll show in a bit. So the equipment, just the Lintvarian True Beam and Trilogy, that's located here. Um, the phantom with eight ball bearings, you can see there. And the rotation rig from Wong, where that's the light field and radiation field test, which connect to the couch. And there's like dials in there somewhere that you rotate and try to match the um, perpendicular angle. So MATLAB and Python is equipment as well. So some methods that I got reference, I need to take a reference measurement so that during arc measurements I can compare. And, and the main challenge again is keeping the phantom perpendicular to this beam and the measurements in 10 degree intervals as it rotates. And it, actually, for data analysis, I'm using the Hoff transform, which I'll explain more later. So my research map, how am I going to do this? So I've got the proposal and the review done. Equipment acquisition, I think most, mostly half is acquired. Um, then I'll have to take the first reference measurement in the gantry zero and perform some data analysis in Python and MATLAB simultaneously, if I can. And then I'll be taking arc measurements and then anal analyzing the arc measurements and then hopefully creating a Python-based GUI for Linux, where I'll be using this program here, which I need to, I'll explain a bit more later. And please have a publication, please, maybe. Um, okay, just to go through the measurements quickly. I'll be comparing between the Varian True Beam versus Trilogy. And I've got these, the, the ball bearings and the phantom here as reference points, so I can measure the distances. And this is just for the initial measurements in Gantry Zero, where I'll have different size fields, so about five different size fields from 5 by 5 to 25 by 25. And during arc measurements, I'll also have to include the tilt and skewness of the light radiation field, where ball bearing to ball bearing will be the measurement of the tilt. And as you can see, like this distance from that one to there was slightly different from that one to down there. It's not very clear, but it's still, yeah. And from, for skewness, we'll be using the BBs to the edge. And all of these we measured at, at each 10 degree interval in the 360 degree rotation. Um, so data analysis, the Hoff transform, is generally used to find some imperfections in objects and isolate features of shapes and images. It's um, very good because it's relatively unaffected by image noise, and it provides a geometrical representation of an edge via edge detection. There's also it does this by a voting scheme, where I'll have an image that illustrates that a bit better. <coughs> later. So um, my plan is to do this initially in MATLAB, because there's already pre-existing code in there. And then after that, I'll be transcribing it to Python after. Um, there will be other stuff like root mean square deviation and standard deviation, which is just to compare between each angle measurement of each other. And this is the image that I found and definitely didn't take off Wikipedia. But so if we have this image and then we apply the Hoff transform, we get these points where this is the point of most coincidence, I think. I'm not entirely sure. I need to read up on that more. Um, and just back to my research map where, again, hopefully I can start getting my first reference measurement, say, next semester. After exams, I'll think of how getting all the rest of the equipment. Uh, and just go through again. Yeah. Uh, any, thank you for listening.
questions and does the references? Um, so how are you going to see then the Gantry is rotating, we may have movements of the light source to So how are you going to separate? That's the thing I'll really be measuring, because as the rotation, I can use the reference measurement and compare it using the phantom, which I can get that up quickly, where we can use these like solid lines to measure where the light light field is and see if that changes, I guess. One of the focus of this project is to measure the movement as well. Yeah. So the light source movement. This is sort of inaccuracy. Yeah, well, why is it important to have that um, coincidence at all angles? Oh, because yes. because the light the light field is just find where that is. Um, yeah. So the light field is the representation during treatments of where the radiation will be impacting the patient. Do they use it? Pardon? Do they use it during rotation? When the patient um, is set off, then after that, they don't really use the one. It is also, well, I'll need to look into that more, but, I'm, but like it's just to quality assurance to measure if the light radiation, light and field will coincide during the arc, just to make sure. Yeah. In some angles, we set up the patient not this to zero. We use yes. some other angles for set patient setup. Yeah. That's you don't only use, use zero gamma angle patients, okay. you go to different angles. <coughs> How are you actually measuring the light field? Um, I'll be using images taken with phantom because the BBs have like a set distance between yeah. each and then I can measure using like image analysis software giving the reference. So what do you take the image with? Um, probably with just visual verification as Monty was taking, was saying how the visual verification is a more accurate representation of the radiation field. We just some lines. Yeah, I was wondering can you stick your iPhone on the yes, that's not on the <laughs> treatment head. I can do that if I use a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, with the uh, camera. It's not yeah. sophisticated. Yeah. I know, but <laughs> the other thing is, um, so you're you're using different field sizes. Are you going to set each draw individually and match it to your lines, or are yeah. you going to just set like a yeah, I will have to think about that. Yeah, I haven't really thought that far into it. In this angle, we can measure that the accuracy. Yeah. So that when we need to adjust it, we can find how much to adjust it to here. Okay. And then that would be the error. Sometimes when you set like five by five, is it is a bit different than when you go with the adjust your That's, yeah, that's the thing I'll need to look into again. It's like, realistic, I haven't really thought enough on those sides yet. What would be a tolerance, do you think? What, what, what would you think uh, if you measured the, the congruence of the light and radiation at different angles? Where would, at, at what difference would you say, well, that's out of um, specification that needs to be attended to? Two millimeters according to the. Well, that's, at, that's at zero, isn't yeah. it? But I think that also will apply for the rest of the arc measurements. Because mm -hmm. they don't really specify at different angles what tolerance it will be. So I'm just going to use that as the tolerance for every single angle throughout. Yeah. 